bet on fantasy football against real people with BetMate, and win cash prizes with a £100 free-to-play pot available for new customers. Pick your team with no budget restrictions and earn points for typical fantasy actions, as well as tackles and interceptions. Download the app today for free via the link in the description and play against me. With the start of the season almost upon us, it's time for a quick fire Q&A session. You've been kindly sending in your questions via Twitter, and here are my answers. FPLSP asks, who do you think is the best under 6 million pick to start the season with other than the obvious, Martinelli and Neto? So I'm assuming we're talking specifically midfielders, and for me, Leon Bailey is the other player that stands out in that price range. Very much in line to start after an impressive preseason, and opening ties with Bournemouth and Everton to help continue his form. Almiron is another option I quite like. He was Newcastle's top scorer in preseason with four goals and looks primed for a starting place in their front three alongside Wilson and St. Maximin. Jesse Lingard also deserves a mention at 6 million. I have high hopes for him at Forest this season, but I'd like to see how he settles in first. FPL Andreas asks, is triple Liverpool worth it on a freemium draft? For anyone not aware, a freemium draft is one that includes three premium players. For example, Salah, Haaland and Kane. One of the main reasons I haven't gone down that road with my team is because of how hard it is to fit in a third Liverpool asset, alongside Alexander-Arnold and Salah. My advice would be to opt for Alisson rather than Robertson, Diaz or Nunez to help with funds. Here's an example of a freemium draft I've put together. It's still got the three big hitters in defence, but you could go for Perisic and a 5 million defender such as Doherty or Cash instead of Rhys James and Alo. It doesn't look too bad if I may say so myself, but this strategy means you'll have two big hitters in your side each week that you won't be captaining, and therefore perhaps not getting the best value out of. So I still prefer going with just two premiums and spreading the cash around. Harry asks, is five at the back too inflexible? The short answer to this is yes, it is inflexible, but the reason I think it's viable is because I'm selecting a team for the first five or six game weeks, not necessarily for the entire season. So I'd argue that you can sacrifice flexibility early on to an extent, knowing that you're only likely to be a couple of weeks away from making wholesale changes. This season, an early wildcard looks especially handy, given that we get unlimited transfers to use after game week 16, when we come back from the World Cup. Therefore, the later you use your first wildcard, the less impact it can have, because the fewer number of weeks there'll be before those unlimited transfers arrive. Early on, a lot of the top sides have good fixtures, and we've seen more and more in recent years how premium defenders, especially wingbacks, can offer various avenues for FPL points. Jebin asks, is it wise to go without an 8 million midfielder? Later, if you want to bring any of them in, you have to make two transfers to get the money. So this leads on from the last question about flexibility, and it's a fair point, but I do think the idea of selecting an 8 million midfielder so that you can transfer between the other options at that price has been a little bit overplayed. When you look at the options, Luis Diaz is great, but if you've gone for Robertson, you can probably hold him at least until you wildcard, even if you start to see Diaz emerge as the better pick. Similarly with Bakayo Saka, if you've already gone Jesus and Martinelli, are you likely to want to triple up on Arsenal's attack? For me, Kulisevsky and Mount are probably the ones I'd most like to own, but I still prefer loading up at the back with Rhys James and Perisic and investing slightly less money in those teams early on. But again, I think the strategy of an early wildcard is key to deciding to go without an 8 million midfielder. Henry asks, is it worth spending the extra 0.5 on Neto, or is Bailey at 5 million the better choice? For me, it comes down to the fact that, however good Bailey has been in preseason, he's far from guaranteed a starting place beyond the first couple of weeks. He has a high upside in those first two game weeks, perhaps even more so than Neto. But with Neto, I'd say there's less likelihood of me needing to spend a transfer on him, because even if there are other players performing slightly better, he'll still be a nailed on starter ticking over with good fixtures. So I value the fact that Neto can perhaps save me a transfer early on, knowing that I can just wait to get rid of him when I play the wildcard, which I expect will be around game week 6 or 7. And the final question for today comes from Matthew, who asks, 
Besides the usual big hitters, Salah, Son, Kane, Trent, Cancelo, etc., who do you think will be a surprise big hitter this season? Well, if we're talking purely in terms of price bracket, I'd say Raheem Sterling is the one that could push on this season at 10 million pounds, and perhaps offer us a saving on our second premium pick down the line. He's proven himself at this level, reaching double figures for goals in each of the last five seasons with Man City. And now he'll have the chance to nail down a regular starting place at Chelsea. But a lower priced player I can see having an improved season is Jadon Sancho. He's taken a bit of time to settle and adapt to a new league, and he's had to do that in a Man United side that have been going through changes themselves, with different managers, tactics and personnel. It looks like they've got someone who can set them on the right path now in Eric Ten Hag, although it is only early days. But that partnership down the right-hand side between Sancho and Delo looked really exciting in pre-season, and he's clearly growing in confidence the more he plays. Not one to start the season with for me, because we're spoiled with a number of budget options in midfield that are perhaps less risky and more helpful for funding big hitters elsewhere. But definitely someone I've got my eye on for later on. 